Hello learners, welcome to NIOS. Today we will study a topic from your biology syllabus titled Nitrogen Metabolism. We will see how this process occurs in plants. As you can see, the objectives of today's lesson will be, you will be able to describe the modes of nitrogen fixation, you will be able to explain the steps involved in nitrogen fixation, you will be able to understand the modes of symbiotic nitrogen fixation in leguminous plants, you will describe the assimilation of nitrate and ammonia by plants, and you will be able to describe amino acid synthesis in plants. As you can see, we will first start with a little description of the nitrogen molecule. As shown in this picture, you can see the nitrogen molecule is made up of two atoms bonded by a triple bond, which is a stable triple bond, and hence it is not reactive. The percentage of nitrogen in the atmosphere is 78.03% and it has a low boiling point of minus 195.8 degrees centigrade. There are two chief molecules in every living cell, namely the proteins and the nucleic acids which have nitrogen in them. Proteins have 16% nitrogen and amino acids and there are nitrogen bases in DNA and RNA. Let's come to the nitrogen cycle. The chief role of the nitrogen cycle can be understood as seen. The nitrogen in the air, which is 78%, is unusable. So to make it usable, it has to be converted from an unusable form to a usable form. This is the role of the nitrogen cycle. This conversion mainly happens in two ways. Lightning converts nitrogen to ammonia and the other mode is nitrogen fixers, namely the microbes such as rhizobium found in the roots of leguminous plants which convert the nitrogen to ammonia. Talking about leguminous plants, you can see the examples which are most familiar. The pea plant is a best example of a legume. Pulses such as rajma, chana, further groundnut and all kinds of beans. These are examples of leguminous plants. Talking about the details of the nitrogen cycle, as you can see the flowchart, the nitrogen in the atmosphere is actually first picked up by the nitrogen fixing bacteria and it is then made available to plants and animals both by the food chain. When plants and animals die and decompose, the dead organic material which is acted upon by bacteria is converted to ammonia and then to nitrates. These nitrates are acted upon by denitrifying bacteria and nitrogen is released back into the atmosphere. The same nitrogen cycle is given here in the form of different steps. As a recap, nitrifying bacteria, they convert nitrogen into ammonium, into nitrate, and then the plant absorbs these nitrates. The remaining leftover nitrates are acted upon by denitrifying bacteria and converted back to nitrogen. Next, we will talk about types of nitrogen fixation. The meaning of nitrogen fixation is a process of conversion of molecular nitrogen to nitrogen compounds such as ammonia. The first type of nitrogen fixation is called as abiological nitrogen fixation because it does not involve any microbes in it. The first process under abiological, as clearly seen in this slide here, is Haber's process, which is preparation of synthetic ammonia in the industrial level. Nitrogen combines with hydrogen under high temperature and high pressure to form ammonia. Second, the other process of abiological nitrogen fixation is by the process of natural fixation which occurs during electrical discharges and lightning in nature. As the equation is showing, 
nitrogen is combined with oxygen and forms different nitrate oxides in the atmosphere. The second chief type of nitrogen fixation is biological nitrogen fixation. It is called biological because it involves the role of living organisms and these organisms have nitrogenases enzymes in them. Examples of nitrogen fixers are free living microbes as well as symbiotic microbes. We will first talk about nitrogen fixation by free living microbes. As you can see here, organisms such as Clostridium, which are anaerobic bacteria, Klebsiella, which are facultative bacteria, Azotobacter, which are aerobic bacteria, Rhodospirillum, which are purple non-sulfur bacteria, and Anapena, which is an important cyanobacteria performing photosynthesis. Talking about symbiotic nitrogen fixation, there are certain nitrogen fixing microbes which establish a mutual relationship with a host plant called as symbiosis. As you all know, symbiosis is a mutual process in which both partners of the association benefit from each other. Going ahead with this, examples of symbiotic nitrogen fixers are lichens which involve an association of cyanobacteria and fungi, bryophytes involving cyanobacteria and anthoceros, pteridophytes involving cyanobacteria and azola, gymnosperms involving cyanobacteria with cycas, angiosperms showing an association between legumes and rhizobium, also showing association between non-leguminous plants and actinomycetes such as Alnus, Myrica and Parsia. Angiosperms also have an association with Brazilian grass, corn and azospirillum. Coming to the requirements of biological fixation of nitrogen, this process requires first and foremost molecular nitrogen. Second, it needs a reducing power to reduce nitrogen such as reduced FAD, that is flavin adenine dinucleotide and reduced NAD such as nicotinamide adenine dinucleotide. The process also requires a source of energy which is chiefly ATP. This energy is needed to transfer hydrogen atoms from NADH2 or FADH2 to the dinitrogen molecule. Next requirement is the enzyme nitrogenase and finally there are supposed to be certain compounds for trapping the ammonia formed since ammonia is toxic to the cells and it cannot be allowed to accumulate. This is an overview of the biochemical process involved in the stepwise reduction of nitrogen to ammonia. This process happens in three sub-steps as shown in the screen. Nitrogen is first of all converted in presence of nitrogenase enzyme into a compound called diamide. Talking about nitrogenase, as we just did earlier, talking about leguminous plants, we would like to show how leguminous plants actually have the root nodules where this whole process occurs. Here students you can have a look. These are certain freshly plucked legume roots and these structures are the root nodules. It is in these root nodules that all the requirements are functioning. Let me show you with a model of a root nodule. Suppose this is a root nodule and if I cut it into half, you will see that it appears pink from inside. This pink color is because of a pigment or a special protein called as leg hemoglobin. It is this leg hemoglobin which has all the necessary processes 
It is concerned with the nitrogenase as explained in this process here. Coming back to the first step, nitrogen in presence of nitrogenase converts to diamide. Next, the diamide converts to a compound called hydrazine. And finally, this hydrazine converts to ammonia. As we mentioned earlier, ammonia, since it is toxic, it has to be immediately removed from the cells and therefore it is converted to amino acids. This is the overall biochemical process in the form of an equation as seen on the screen. The overall flow sheet for the biochemical steps included in nitrogen fixation are as follows. Again here you can see how leg hemoglobin is actually involved in conversion of nitrogen into diamide, further into hydrazine, further into ammonia and since this ammonia is toxic and has to be utilized immediately, therefore the flowchart says that it is converted into ureides and other amino acids. Also mentioned here learners is the fact that the nitrogenase enzyme contains iron and molybdenum complexes which you can see here written as FEMO complexes. Nitrogen fixation in legumes. Talking about the details here, it takes place in root nodules which we just saw. These root nodules have a special protein, the leg hemoglobin. Again, recalling and recapping, this is the pink pigment if you cut open the root nodules, this is how they will appear. And the pink color is because of the special protein, leg hemoglobin. Leg hemoglobin is an oxygen scavenger, meaning it removes oxygen from the atmosphere or the environment to create anaerobic conditions for nitrogenase. This, you know, is a limitation of nitrogenase. It can function only in anaerobic situations. Apart from leg hemoglobin, special proteins called nodulins are also present which helps in symbiosis and in the proper functioning of root nodules. The role of leg hemoglobin can be understood as follows. Leg hemoglobin lowers down the partial pressure of oxygen and this is how it helps in nitrogen fixation. This function is specific only for legumes because free living microbes do not possess nitrogen fixing leg hemoglobin. It is also not found in cyanobacterial symbiosis with other plants which fix nitrogen under aerobic conditions. Why? Because we have just now said that nitrogenase functions only under anaerobic conditions. This is how nitrate and ammonia get assimilated in plants. Plants which do not fix nitrogen, they use nitrate and ammonia for metabolism. This happens in two steps as seen on your screen. Nitrate is first of all converted to nitrite. You can see the equation. NADH is involved here. And this process or equation requires a catalyst in the form of an enzyme nitrate reductase. Components of nitrate reductase are namely FAD, cytochromes, NADPH or NADH depending on the condition and molybdenum. The process of nitrate reduction occurs in the cytoplasm of each plant cell. Increased nitrate concentration in cytoplasm induces more of this enzyme to be produced. Hence, it is an auto-controlled process. The second step, the nitrite formed is further converted to ammonia. As you can see in the following equation, it mentions how this equation or process also requires a specific enzyme which is nitrite reductase. This reaction occurs in the cytoplasm. The ammonia formed as the chief product is toxic 
and therefore it has to be quickly used in the form of proteins by way of amino acid metabolism. Amino acid synthesis in plants. Ammonium is the major source for amino acids. Amino acids form proteins and enzymes. This we have learned from our previous classes. The chief structure of an amino acid is mentioned on your screen as follows. There is a carbon atom, there is a hydrogen, a side chain or the functional group, a carboxyl group on one side and an amino group on the other side. The area of our concern here is the amino group. Ammonium formed directly is involved in the formation of this amino group. Amino acid biosynthesis in plants happens by two main processes. First, the first process for amino acid synthesis in all plants is reductive amination. In this process, ammonia combines with a keto acid mainly alpha ketoglutaric acid. We have studied about Krebs cycle earlier. There we have seen how alpha ketoglutaric acid is generated. This product from Krebs cycle or the TCA cycle as it is alternatively called as is a keto acid which combines with ammonia in the presence of an enzyme glutamate dehydrogenase to form glutamic acid which is one of the chief amino acids in plants. Apart from this there is another process also which occurs in plants and this is called as the transamination process. In this method there is a transfer of an amino group from an amino acid to another acid which is a keto acid. As you can see learners on your screen are mentioned keto acids as well as amino acids in the equation on the left side. Alpha ketoglutaric acid being the chief keto acid combines with an amino acid called aspartic acid. In the presence of an enzyme transaminase they form glutamic acid and oxaloacetic acid. So here there has been a conversion or rather a shift of amino acid of an amino group from an amino acid to a keto acid. Aspartic acid in the above equation transfers its amino group to another acid called as alpha ketoglutaric acid to form glutamic acid and it releases the keto acid namely oxaloacetic acid. We hope you have understood the entire lesson. We hope you have also got clarity in all the concepts. Thank you for watching.